Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial. Now recently I've been seeing quite a few comments in various Facebook groups asking about sort of why the shadows and highlights adjustments are different. It's not something I personally have noticed myself but I thought I'd have a look at it. Now I'm not claiming to be an expert in any of this I'm just going to show you the two different adjustments and sort of see what my views are on what the differences are. So I've opened this image twice and this one's named Shadows and Highlights Adjustments and I've named this second one Shadows and Highlights Filter. So going with the adjustments first now you can open adjustments in two you know, various ways but the easiest way is to click on this half black and white icon here and select shadows and highlights so you've got two basic sliders here so that is the first method and if I come to the other image then we're going to look at the filters I mean, obviously you can do filters from up here you've got shadows and highlights but I'm going to use a live filter so the live filters you can get from this icon down here and the shadows and highlights is here now with the shadows and highlights with filters you get four um, sliders rather than two so you've got shadow strength, shadow range, highlight strength, highlight range this is like the default version in this I think is 1.9 this version of Affinity Photo there is a drop down menu where you can change back to how it used to be back in version 1.6 and this will give you even more sliders so although they've got the same name shadows and highlights the difference between uh, the filters is that you get more sliders than you do with the adjustments now I had a look in the help files and I've done screen grabs of the relevant pages and let me zoom in this is for the adjustment so you've got adjust the lightness and shadows and highlights in the range in the image and further down here you've got the Sort of rather than applying the light adjustments to the entire image making it lighter or darker this adjustment affects the image shadow and highlight areas in the surrounding pixels and then it goes on to talk about the two sliders controlling the lightness of an image or the darkness of an image and for the filters again I'll zoom in a bit here Let's go up here and it's just got like the shadows and highlights filter allows a stronger manipulation of the shadows and highlights tonal regions in an image and can be used to reduce the contrast boost shadow details and recover highlight details and then down the bottom um, it's just like the filter can be applied non-destructively using live filters and it goes on to say, yeah, but explaining a bit about the different controls and like the 1.6, the classic version is filter retained for backward compatibility with existing documents. So the help files do explain sort of the differences between, but just a sort of simple layman's looking at it. From my point of view, it looks like the adjustment layers version it is a much subtler change although you are you know obviously you're changing the pixels be them darker and lighter the image still sort of for want of a better phrase looks like a sort of pretty normal photograph because the changes I mean, unless you go really extreme the change is fairly subtle so 
you can sort of probably fine tune an image that is probably pretty much okay to start with using a shadows and highlights adjustment. Shut that down and we'll come to the filter version. Now with this, the, the little go that I've had it on this, I mean, let me go like really mad and push the shadow range quite high. And let's go the opposite way with the highlights, maybe. Oh, that might be a better way to go. But as you can see, you probably got a. If the image that you had probably didn't have sort of a lot going for it in the sense of contrast and the shadows and highlights adjustment is not enough this probably has more oomph to it to sort of really draw out the shadows and highlights in an image now I can't quite recreate what I did before um, but when I was doing this with my first trial effort it started to look almost like an HDR image I pushed it so far that it was looking less like a normal out of the camera image and more like an HDR image and probably not the best kind of HDR image um, for some reason I can't quite recreate that um, at this present moment in time so that is basically the two differences between adjustments and filters it might have helped if they had renamed them slightly both being called shadows and highlights sort of probably sort of confuses the issues but I personally can't think of a better name and I'm guessing Serif couldn't either um, I suppose they could have called it Highlights and Shadows rather than both being Shadows and Highlights. So it's more a case of what you're trying to do if you just want a very subtle change with the Shadows and Highlights it might be best to go with an adjustment layer but if you need to sort of really bring out something in an image you might be better going with a filter and I would suggest going with live filters rather than a destructive filter from the filters menu. The good thing is uh, with live filters and adjustments they both have layer masks attached so you can if you just want to bring out a certain area you can paint on the layer mask of the particular adjustment or filter or you, if you're more if you're worried about that you can just add a layer mask to either the filter or adjustment layer so hopefully this will try and this will clear up some of the confusion about why there's two different types of adjustments both called shadows and highlights um, it's obviously a thing that serif have done deliberately and I just couldn't think of a way of renaming the different adjustments or filters. Now the only other sort of difference I can see between the two versions is being able to sort of save your adjustments. Now when it comes to the filters you have no way of saving presets and what have you but with adjustments you can save your uh, whatever settings you have as a preset so if you have very similar images you can then repeat that um, let me just delete this and once you have saved it as a preset you would then the only way to really get to the presets is via the adjustments tab and open up your shadows and highlights and then any presets that you have made you can then add let's go with this one here and 
so this is a preset that I made some time ago so that is the only real difference you can make and save your presets using the adjustments but you can't do anything like that with filters so that is the end of the tutorial thank you for watching and goodbye